Sometimes I sit in my yard and I look at the stars and they really are quite amazing. I think about the fact that over the centuries and the millennium, I can't imagine that every single person that's lived has not at times gazed up that way and felt a sense of awe. We happen to be looking at the exact same thing that they looked at all those centuries or millenniums ago. It's strange how we've been given a story since birth though. When we just look at where we are in the stream of time and we look at this century and we recognize that we were all given a story from our mentors, our, our teachers, our instructors, our academic institutions and our governments providing all the evidence for them that we live on a ball and we evolved from monkeys and before that rodents maybe and before that sea life like fish and before that invertebrates and ultimately a single celled organism like an amoeba and somehow that magically evolved from a milkshake non-living matter turned into a single-celled organism. That's the beginning of life. A single-celled organism that, if you really examine it, is so complicated, it's ridiculous to imagine that it was not the result of creative design, intelligent design. Nonetheless, we're taught this. And if you're looking at the flat earth, here's some food for thought. Don't get too caught up in the term flat. You might think more about the term globe because this is what we are all indoctrinated with. And the more you examine the proof that we were all given to help us believe and digest this story, you see that the evidence is fake and it's fraudulent and it's bogus and it's not credible. Now, if you go to court and you start presenting a bunch of evidence that is not credible and that is deceptive and that the judge finds irrelevant or not acceptable by the standards of the court, there's nothing you can say after that that they want to hear because you've already proven yourself a liar. But we were all taught this story and when you start to consider anything else and discuss it with your peers, you're crazy because they all know the story and they will repeat parts of that story to you as if you've never heard the story before. You start looking at evidence that would suggest a flat earth, the flat earth is a much more realistic model. Although it does require at some point the acknowledgement that it is intelligent design and there must be a creator. But when you start talking to people about this stuff, they act like you're a fool and they try to make themselves feel brilliant by explaining to you something you already have been taught. None of us were raised in a vacuum tube. We know what the official model is. We were playing with the globe in kindergarten. And we were taught about the solar system in elementary school. And as we progressed through college and university, if you wanted to proceed that direction, you could go into astronomy classes, which would tell you where the galaxies are and how the universe is expanding and, and how you can look at the color of the stars and tell whether it's moving away or toward you. And just, there's an endless amount of detail to this story. But wait a minute, does that mean that it's true? Anybody who has been a fan of Star Wars or Lord of the Rings recognizes that the story is very, the story is very self-supporting and complex and detailed. So just because what they're teaching you about cosmological things in academia is complex and interwoven does not make it true. And it also doesn't mean that the people involved teaching it are in on the lie. It just means they're useful idiots that are repeating what they were taught. It's a self-perpetuating system. 
And at the top of it are the agencies that have the magical keys to the tools that allow them to reveal all of the newest discoveries like planets and universes and and the, you know oh they, they we have little robot rc cars on mars taking selfies give me a break a lot of people when they start looking at this flat earth topic start recognizing that it does make a lot of sense but when you start questioning the origin of the world and life and the things that we see and observe in the sky it does start to lean in a very spiritual direction it does make you question are we the product of an all-powerful being that had an intelligent design and created a world that was perfect for human inhabitants our food tastes good colors are delightful the the scenery and the mountains and the diversity of the world is so beautiful the system that's teaching we live on a globe wouldn't recognize that they're wiping out every beautiful thing on the planet destroying the forest poisoning the oceans poisoning the air paving over meadows to make slums but after all they think that we came from animals and animals are inanimate objects for the most part in their minds which explains why they treat the populations the way they do I was looking at a couple scriptures that caught my eye Job 26 verse 7 says he stretches out the northern sky over empty space suspending the earth on nothing there may have been societies in the past that believed we were suspended from something but when you look at a chandelier it's suspended from the ceiling a boulder on the side of a mountain is not suspended it's sitting on the earth a mountain is not suspended but a swing set is suspended from a tree limb so this scripture implies that we're not hanging from anything but it also does not necessarily imply that we are a ball suspended on nothing meaning invisible gravity flying around the solar system I saw another scripture I thought was interesting too it was in Ecclesiastes first chapter verse 5 my translation says the Sun rises and the Sun sets then it hurries back to the place where it rises again and the footnote hurries back says as if exhausted from a journey does this suggest that the earth is in motion and that we're spinning and the Sun came into view or does it actually imply that the earth is still as the Bible says the earth is immovable as the Bible says and the Sun is in fact doing the traveling think about that when you look at the most popularly used representation of the flat earth map uh, we'll go with the USGS azimuthal equidistant projection and you look down at that map and you look at the northern tropic and then you look at the southern tropic or from this point I'll refer to the inner and outer tropic as the Sun goes around its path and hurries back to the place where it rises again when it's over the northern tropic doesn't it look like the deserts on that tropic latitude in the north the tropic of cancer at 23 degrees look at that ring of deserts that occur around the earth and then go to the southern hemisphere and you look at that outer tropic of capricorn and you look at all the deserts that occur along that path those could easily be the product of a sun traveling in close proximity to the earth and distributing its heat creating those deserts 
Now academia teaches us, no, it's just the angle of the Earth when it goes around the Sun. I don't really buy that. And here's something to think about. Look at the deserts in the Northern Hemisphere. That's when the Sun is going around the Tropic of Cancer. Now it crosses the equator and then, you, then it goes down and momentarily rests before it changes direction on the Tropic of Capricorn. And you see all the deserts that occur there. It goes over the equator twice, which means it receives that same direct intensity from the sun twice as frequently as the tropic on the northern and southern extremes of its path. The biggest deserts in the world should be over the equator because it gets direct overhead sunshine twice as frequently as the tropics do but it's in transition according to the flat earth model. Just a thought, look at those deserts, look at where the tropics are and imagine yourself if that could be the product of the sun 93 million miles away illuminating the entire globe. Or if it looks more like perhaps the sun is closer than they say because to me, it could very well be that it's closer than they say and is responsible for those deserts in those tropic regions. At the end of the day, you can sit on your back porch and look at the sky and you still see the same stars that were looked at by people centuries ago and millenniums ago and nothing has changed. It's like clockwork. Yet the story they taught us is that we're traveling through the universe at half a billion miles an hour. I would think something would have changed along the view but I'm sure there's some mathematical formula that tells us that what makes sense is not actually the way it works. You have to think about it. If you're looking at the flat earth and you have to reason and critique and scrutinize and be honest with yourself, start from a point where you don't give the original story that we've been given from birth any credibility at all make them prove it and when you start looking at all of the frauds that nasa has generated along the way and presented as evidence of their activity to discover great things in space you can't believe what they teach anymore which leads you to other things and if you're really looking for the truth, you have to be intellectually honest and there can be no sacred cows. You have to question everything. And when you find the testimony of a contributor like NASA to be fake, you have to throw everything out that they teach as fake and having no merit. And what does that leave you with? No pictures of the globe, no pictures of the space station, no fake uh, zero gravity spacewalks around satellites. And then what do you have? You have what you see with your own eyes. You have what instruments have demonstrated over and over that the earth is not in motion. You have a horizon over any body of water that you can see that has zero curve. There's so many things to consider. So don't let yourself be dissuaded from investigating this subject by peers that want to mock you. They're just not interested in the truth. Eventually everybody ultimately has to believe something. And we were all taught the same thing in school. And we were never taught to question what we were taught at school.
So keep looking and keep thinking. You may find something really interesting at the end of that journey.